and, uh, and efforts. So in, in Europe, uh, even though the European uh, uh, Commission uh, issued in 2012 uh, uh, the guidelines uh, for the uh, for the countries, uh, obviously each country is on its own uh, regarding the um, um, the ruling of education and uh, and uh, sport, but uh, uh, there are some supranational in, uh, indication or recommendation uh, or the expectation. Um, so at this point of time, uh, uh, the combination of sport uh, and education, it's uh, a, a huge uh, uh, continuum and uh, we say is a kaleidoscopic uh, picture because it uh, goes from a well-established dual career, especially, I don't know, in uh, in the UK, in uh, Portugal, in Spain, to La Cefe, no form of structure uh, as uh, in Italy and other countries. So there are very different ways of interpreting the guidelines. Uh, and uh, in 2016, uh, a, a European study um, showed uh, that many countries are well beyond the uh, um, standards, uh, um, the requirement. If you want to get acquainted with the dual career uh, discourse in Europe, there are two interesting uh, um, uh, SLR. One is uh, on, uh, the first one was in 2015, and now we have one uh, in 2019. And uh, this gives you the idea that dual career is growing in relevance also at scientific level because uh, uh, the, the main issue is uh, the um, capability we have uh, to develop uh, at the best uh, the human resources of the individual, especially when he's young. And uh, who has the role and the responsibility in developing uh, these uh, uh, potential of uh, the uh, uh, talented individual. Uh, almost everybody, from the family uh, to the coach, uh, to the um, teachers, uh, to the siblings and so on, uh, those are very proximal to the individual and are uh, highlighted in orange. Then we have the organization, the uh, national sport organization and also the uh, uh, educational organization, uh, and uh, maybe their uh, career counseling, maybe in, uh, like in uh, in UK. Uh, and then uh, there are the uh, sovereign mass, uh, sovereign uh, regional, the national uh, competencies in sport and education, and the international at uh, the European level in the European Union and also Council of Europe. And, and we don't have to disregard the role of media in this uh, big uh, discourse. Now, the family has the main responsibility, but has also relationship direct and indirect with all these systems. And if you look at the, uh, a survey, uh, we ran in uh, 2017 during the um, uh, Universiad Games, uh, the, oh, actually the Universiad, Summer Universiad. Uh, you see the parents are the most uh, uh, rewarded or recognized supporter at personal entourage, but also sport entourage when parents might be also coaches or at academic entourage when the parents are also uh, teachers. And uh, if you look at the uh, fees, who, um, take a look at the fees who, um, website because they also run a similar uh, survey in uh, 2019 uh, summer and winter uh, games, even though the, the um, sample is not uh, as big as uh, the one in 2017, but uh, uh, the, um, um, the uh, actually uh, the proportion is this. Parents are the most uh, important supporter of the athletes. I want to share with you a video we did on uh, 
for a project uh, which is Empatia project. Empatia is the educational model for parents uh, into uh, sport and academics. And this is uh, just a, a, let's say, a, a simple way of uh, uh, describing the situation. So, Empatia uh, wanted to help parents uh, supporting their talented child, okay? And uh, um, there are um, few um, initiatives in this regard, uh, mostly on the sports side. For example, the International Tennis Federation is uh, just launched a, a educational pro a program for uh, tennis parents. Now, the problem is uh, that uh, if you uh, think that uh, you want to empower parents uh, as dual career supporter, you have uh, some uh, sport specific aspect you have country specific aspect because as we uh, said before, each country rules uh, in a different way uh, for sport and education. So it's very difficult to uh, find out uh, how to uh, help them. Uh, nobody has uh, the uh, right recipe to help them. So. Uh, the approach of this uh, uh, project, uh, which is uh, coordinated by uh, Professor Dupona uh, at the University of Ljubljana and has uh, uh, 10 institutions from, from six countries uh, uh, combining sport and education, uh, and is uh, Ireland, Portugal, uh, Italy, uh, France, uh, and, uh, uh, and Slovenia. Uh, we decided uh, to uh, have a thorough analysis of the situation. So we had a literature review on uh, dual career parenting, not sport parenting, dual career parenting. So you are not a supporter of a specific sport or sport in general, but as the individual uh, in a holistic way, uh, including education. And then we wanted to uh, get some uh, feedback from the parents. So we run this uh, inter, um, um, this uh, uh, systematic literature uh, review, which is now under uh, second revision uh, on plus one, and uh, um, uh, hopefully we will uh, publish soon. And the, the uh, main idea is that there is a lack of information on the parents' experience, that there is, uh, uh, the studies are limited to some uh, uh, participants uh, from few countries and few sports. So the whole picture, which is very complex, is very unknown. Um, we also, just a second, I will put it back on, uh, on the full screen. Uh, um, so uh, this is, uh, we started from 438 uh, papers and we ended it uh, with uh, 14. Uh, just to give you um, the idea, uh, very few have uh, uh, more than uh, 50 parents. And, uh, and also the countries are very, uh, very limited. Australia, Canada, Finland, Norway, Portugal. You see, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, very different. Uh, so what we uh, wanted to do is to uh, ask the parents their opinion. 
So what we uh, agreed was what kind of parents we have to include. And we wanted to include parents of uh, talented uh, athletes. Now it's very difficult to find a talented athlete, to, de to define a talented athlete, because uh, um, a ta a talent uh, uh, development uh, is a long-term process. But at least if you have uh, parents uh, who already support a ch child uh, in, uh, in uh, competing at national international level from the high school and uh, university, uh, that would be uh, a good uh, representation. So we uh, uh, identify parents and uh, we wanted them to tell us their uh, uh, needs, uh, generating statement. And then uh, uh, we ask uh, a dual uh, career expert to validate the clarity of this uh, uh, statement because uh, we recruited parents in five different countries. So they, they express their own uh, um, needs uh, according to their own experience uh, coming from that country and uh, being uh, uh, a supporter of an athlete in a specific sport environment. And, uh, um, but we were pretty successful. We had uh, 115 uh, parents uh, fully engaged in this uh, focus group uh, and the paper now is under the, um, under revision at the psychology exercise uh, Sport and Exercise uh, Journal, and is a very nice uh, uh, piece of work. And then uh, we uh, got this uh, um, feedback, and uh, those are the research question, uh, and uh, we started from the need of the athlete, and then uh, we started from uh, we we moved to the need of uh, the um, parent. Uh, no. Different from the literature, we had lots of fathers uh, engaging in this uh, in this um, um, focus group because usually are the mothers, and uh, we had uh, twelve individual sports and nineteen sports. When I talk about individual sports, I talk about a wide range from uh, car, uh, motor, um, motor races, to uh, fencing, uh, gymnastics, you name it. We had a very large representation. And uh, they uh, provided 206 statements, uh, which were refined uh, according to, uh, to avoid replication and so on. And uh, this was, uh, uh, on the right side, you see the Empatia team. On the left side, you see the uh, uh, 36 uh, uh, dual career expert uh, in Europe who uh, engage in validation of the statement. Once we had the, the statement, we engage in a concept mapping, which is uh, a very novel uh, methodology for sport and physical activity, I, I would also recommend you to, uh, um, because it's a physical activity, to read the uh, paper on uh, uh, the author is Condello. It's on the uh, framework, uh, physical activity framework in Europe uh, using concept mapping. So we engaged uh, uh, 489 parents all over uh, these five uh, countries. Uh, now the mothers are more than the mm, fathers. Uh, those are the um, uh, situation in uh, their uh, child and the, the, the athlete. So uh, more or less um, uh, female and uh, men athletes uh, are uh, represented individual team or both uh, are well represented as well. And then you see that many are already at international or national level. Uh, what uh, they, they, uh, this uh, exercise is quite demanding 
they had to, um, they were provided with the 80 statement uh, with cards, those are the cards, and they had to drag a card in, uh, uh, in groups that for them was uh, uh, logical. So we had the individual logic. And also we asked them to uh, rate the uh, statement in terms of their importance, because we cannot uh, uh, teach parents in any uh, aspect. And uh, um, we allow them online and offline opportunities. And, uh, uh, and then we uh, analyze the, uh, the results. And I'll tell you, this was a four day, a full four day exercise for well established researchers. So, so it was a very, very intense uh, uh, aspect. And we identify five clusters coming from the individual logic and uh, combined. And the one, uh, the big area, this one, is on the uh, parents' role and needs. Uh, this area is on the athlete need, and this is the policy needs. Um, in particular, we have parental roles, needs, and awareness, and awareness of supporting athletes. The requirements for effective planning of dual career pathways and their educational opportunities, what they need to be educated in. And then uh, the athlete uh, was uh, the athlete lifestyle and self management. And this is very important the policy and provision for dual career. Interestingly, many parents uh, asked to have uh, uh, a, a full representation in. Uh, in, uh, uh, in the sport and educational bodies because they need uh, to interact on behalf of the uh, athlete, not on behalf of their uh, child, but on behalf of the student athlete. So this is a very important thing. Uh, in some countries, uh, uh, parents are well represented uh, at the educational level, in the class committee, in the uh, um, school committee, but very few of them are in uh, uh, the sport bodies, a club, federation, and I, and the uh, National Olympic Committee. So we had uh, um, uh, this uh, uh, statement and also the most important statement. See, those are just uh, a graphic representation of the of uh, what uh, the analysis came out. Now we are developing the educational material platform. Actually, we were in a very nice uh, uh, path uh, till February. Uh, obviously, now uh, we have some problems because once uh, we have this educational material and it's in English at the moment, we uh, wanted to have a validation from uh, a sample of uh, parents uh, who would uh, uh, try this platform, tell us uh, their feedback, and once we have uh, their feedback, we can uh, uh, translate uh, all the materials at least in five languages, which is Slovenian, Italian, uh, Portuguese, uh, and French. Uh, obviously because English, uh, they already had it. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, we would like to have as many suggestions and comments and the platform uh, will be available to everybody for free on the website. So um, this is again the Empatia team and I thank you for giving us uh, the opportunity to share this uh, um, approach and, uh, and uh, our um, findings up to now. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Now our Pruden, Prudin uh, Ivan Anastasovsky, but it's not, maybe it's not here. Yeah, 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 I'm here, will... I'm here, I'm here, I'm okay. here. Okay, thank you, Professor Laura, for your 
good speech for your positive and progressive topic. I hope that, that this topic and this platform have a uh, very big interest to our auditorium. To our yeah, just, uh, <clears throat> just to tell you one thing, because yeah, yeah, we please, are in please. the countries uh, who are uh, not represented uh, in, uh, in Europe at the moment, but I can tell you that uh, Europe uh, has uh, a, this uh, uh, program which is called uh, Collaborative Partnership. And uh, uh, in this collaborative partnership, also uh, not member states are allowed and uh, um, yeah. they are very welcome. So yeah. um, in this collaborative partnership, a dual career is uh, one of the priority. And the other thing is uh, that uh, uh, since uh, the beginning of the uh, uh, focus, European focus on sport, uh, the uh, European athlete uh, student, which is this symbol here, is the network of uh, sport and educational institution, which means that uh, um, if uh, you want to join the, uh, the network, uh, you are more than welcome. We have uh, partners from also Asia, uh, also um, America, and uh, also um, Africa, but uh, obviously the Balkan area is uh, uh, very interesting for us because uh, uh, there are lots of programs for sharing uh, knowledge, you know, capacity building and so on. And uh, uh, so if you want to take part you in the, in the network, please uh, go to the uh, dualcareer.eu, which is the network of uh, Dual Career, and uh, become a member. And it's, uh, <coughs> you will get all the information. And also, when there are projects, uh, we try to uh, facilitate uh, the members to take a part in the project. Um, uh, recently was uh, uh, the University of Niche, from, uh, um, who, which was uh, uh, included in another project, but uh, obviously you are more than welcome. Uh, thank you, Professor Laura. I don't know if you know that we are, we are not uh, European uh, I know. Stuck in European uh, now, but uh, in Erasmus, we are in the uh, program country. We are full I know, I know. Uh, and we'll be for sure, uh, and for sure, enjoying this uh, in this platform and uh, this program. But uh, but now I would like to to, to ask you, uh, <clears throat> our colleague and and other who is on the uh, conference now or virtual conference now to to ask you. Uh, some questions, if they have. Uh, now I will speak on the native of our language to to, to ask yeah, uh, yeah, my no colleague. Problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So perfect, colleague. Verom se to go razbrafte. Sega ostanova, ke se stučime sigurno ni je u ova platforma i da bideme delo toj network. Sega ostanova delo od vas na profesorka da i postavite prašenja, komentari ko ima. I verujem da ka se to toa na ova platforma Zoom ke bide dobro izmenažirano da prašanjata bide direktno upateni do profesorkata i da može da se napravi ta direktna komunikacija. Tako da, ako može sega... Ajde, ja sebe, može? Da, slobodno. First, I would like to welcome profesor Laura to our conference and I would like to tell you that this was a very interesting presentation. A nice organization for the uh, uh, for, for the for the athletes, but um, you said that uh, parenting the family has uh, the main role in the athlete's success. But uh, what happens uh, with, uh, for example, our uh, athletes that uh, go to to play in Italy, for example, and they don't have uh, their families with them. How is that organized for those uh, that uh, uh, live in other countries? They don't have uh, the families with them. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this uh, um, interesting um, question because uh, this is actually a problem because uh, when you have uh, a sports system with uh, uh, academies and their recruitment is very young, when they, they, the athlete is very young, I've seen, uh, apart from gymnastics, you know, gymna gymnasts are very young, <clears throat> But I have seen a, a sport curriculum sent by the parents uh, uh, of the soccer player when he was 10. So yes. uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, everything is anticipated. And uh, most of the time, the academies are uh, structured in a specific location and far from the uh, family of the athlete. Uh, and uh, not all the uh, academies are well aware of the fact that the uh, young athlete is a human being, human resources, and uh, uh, that uh, who need uh, a holistic development. So uh, uh, some have, uh, uh, let's say, they um, claim that they help the athlete, but uh, maybe they have uh, very little uh, attention to it, uh, to, to, to the athlete. So the, um, one of the uh, member of Empatia group was uh, uh, INSEP. And INSEP is the high performance center of uh, France and uh, but they are into dual career uh, as a, uh, very well, and uh, they take it in very well consideration. Uh, another one was Port Island, which is the academy of uh, uh, the Irish Academy, and also they have uh, uh, a, a very big experience in dual career. Now. Uh, being aware that those are not the rules, uh, but are the, I would say, the golden standard, and even the golden standard are uh, uh, claim that they have to improve, you know. Um, Empatia has uh, a big ambition, which is to raise the awareness of the parents and also of the academies and so on because their parents, even if they don't have a, a daily uh, uh, relationship with the, uh, with the child, physical relationship with the child, they have uh, often a daily relationship with the mother or the father uh, calling the, uh, the athlete, uh, the athlete calling them and so on. Now with the uh, distance uh, um, communication, it is uh, pretty uh, uh, the case. Mm. And uh, many of the parents uh, in our, um, in our uh, focus group uh, had this situation. Some of their uh, children were in academy, some of their child, of their children were in clubs and uh, they were on their own. So, and they share this uh, problem and they share the need and they share also the solution. And they were pretty uh, pleased uh, of the fact that they were giving them uh, uh, attention. Uh, this is uh, not statistics, uh, this is obviously an, uh, an uh, anecdote because uh, it relates to me. I have parents that after the focus group called me when they, uh, um, son or daughter, uh, finished the high school and had to engage uh, at university level and they were asking me which university in Italy was uh, uh, the best solution for their uh, uh, child because they had no knowledge on uh, uh, the policies at the different universities and I was providing them information and I was uh, providing them the contact person at that university, according to the child uh, uh, 
uh, aspiration because maybe one was in law, another was in uh, communication, then not the, you know, the university have these such a, a good departments and so on. So mm, I think that this is a, a, a must for all of us uh, to raise the awareness and to provide uh, uh, networks, personal networks, uh, uh, institutional networks because uh, the uh, sport club and the university have to have uh, uh, special agreements. Uh, uh, just another example, uh, recently my university started a dual career program with the uh, Equestrian Academy, National Equestrian Academy, with our professor going to the National Academy, delivering the lecture, uh, physically there, obviously it's uh, rather, uh, um, let's say, close to our university, and, uh, and uh, my university is only uh, fully um, uh, devoted to sport, uh, but the athletes are not interested in sport necessarily, only 25% of the athletes are interested in higher education in sport. 75 percent in other uh, so my university was uh, engaged engaged in this novel program it was a best practice you know now that the uh, um, covid uh, pandemic uh, um, was uh, a problem for everybody i think it was an opportunity for dual career because all the universities started online learning, distance learning, which could be much uh, easier um, maintained after the uh, emergency of COVID. Uh, we also investigated, this is another project, we investigated uh, the dual career support during COVID of athletes and we had uh, uh, around uh, 400, uh, 500 athletes uh, in, uh, in uh, Spain, Italy, uh, Slovenia, and other countries, uh, uh, Romania, uh, um, providing their feedback and, and telling us uh, which uh, support they receive from the uh, university, from the coach, uh, from, uh, from the dual career counseling, and so on, and also their problems. And one thing that uh, emerged is that also that they, uh, even though they kept on training, let's say, but not, is not the, the regular trade training they have, uh, they claim that they need at least uh, three, four weeks uh, to uh, get back uh, to their previous uh, performance, which is a problem now because uh, uh, for example, soccer and other federations open the, uh, the um, um, competition. And right now, on the newspaper, you see that top athletes are undergoing injuries because you cannot expect that uh, such an athlete would perform on the reverse. The good, um, the good uh, news is that uh, almost 65% uh, of the student athletes claimed that they manage COVID uh, lockdown much better because they were engaged in education, which means uh, that uh, the holistic uh, development of the person, it's also good for the sport development. So you cannot take the whole life out to magnify sport. You have to keep a good balance yes. and then magnify sport. Yes. Okay, this is my uh, view and also my experience and my data. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, that is interesting you. Uh, what you are doing. And uh, at the end, I would like uh, to say that uh, I hope that uh, you are fine with the COVID uh, pandemic now and uh, uh, slowly you are uh, decreasing the number and uh, slowly uh, going back to, to normal, but not the real normal, because yeah. uh, we were very 
uh, worry about uh, your country at, uh, at the time. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank we you felt, uh, we felt uh, lots of uh, solidarity. And supporting, I hope. And, uh, and <laughs> I might say that from the Balkan countries, uh, we got uh, the first uh, uh, big help uh, from uh, Albania. This was the very first uh, teaching the whole world uh, that apart from uh, being uh, in a European Union or not, uh, um, people shall cooperate more. So that's why I, yes. I really appreciate. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, now, Ordin will go in with question. Uh, Okay, Professor Laura, thank you for a very good presentation. And um, I want, uh, yes, uh, dual career uh, is uh, very important, it's a problem everywhere. Because one of site want to be a top athlete and one of site uh, be, uh, take uh, some uh, faculty certificate and uh, finish and so on. It's a, a holistic problem. Uh, parents, coaching, uh, another agents uh, uh, of uh, many factors. Uh, my, uh, my question for you, um, do you know how organize uh, your physical education uh, in primary school? In uh, first and uh, fifth classes, because it's very important uh, to create it, uh, sport habits for the another ages. Thank you. I can... Uh, uh... I have to uh, make a short preamble. Uh, in, uh, uh, in the last century, during the fascism uh, uh, time, sport and physical education was intended as a means uh, of uh, propaganda and uh, also as a means of educating uh, uh, the minds of the child. So, uh, um, when the Second World War was over in Italy, uh, physical education was banned from primary school. We don't have physical education um, in primary school with physical education teacher. We start from uh, uh, junior high school, 11 years old, which is way too late, okay? Nowadays, uh, we are starting uh, 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 considering that a specific uh, uh, teacher uh, uh, should be uh, engaged in physical education classes at primary school. It's still uh, a project, it's still uh, not uh, uh, structured, unfortunately, uh, but I would like to uh, um, address uh, an interesting uh, uh, study and also uh, there are some resources online from a colleague of mine who is a top, uh, top, top level in exercise and cognition. And uh, the, the name is Joy of Moving, Joy of Moving, and there is the manual and also the videos and so on in, on uh, online. The manual has, has been translated in several uh, languages. And uh, the research coming from this uh, colleague of mine, Katerina Pesce, is one of the top uh, in the world. So if I were you, I would uh, go on this. And she is uh, strongly supporting physical activity in, uh, in elementary school to develop also the uh, intellectual and the behavioral uh, um, aspect of the young individual. And this is an old, uh, let's say, uh, common sense. But from yes. all common sense <clears throat> to practice, nowadays it seems that there is a huge gap, and I don't know why. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, we are. Uh, we have the same problem. Uh, we have uh, many children with obesity, with deformity, and so on. And now we change the law. It's uh, we are very proud about that because in primary school now uh, is teaching a professor in physical education. 
Uh, and, uh, that is very good. I, I would really um, support you to inquire yes. this joy of moving yes. because uh, my colleague, Caterina Pesce, is uh, a, a very a visionary and uh, very dedicated and she is always available to any uh, uh, cooperation, uh, especially if uh, leads to uh, practical application. So it's, uh, uh, it's an opportunity for you to uh, get in contact with somebody who is uh, um, very humane in what she does, <laughs> but is very knowledgeable. So I, and I'm glad that uh, your um, country uh, uh, is uh, starting this uh, program, and I wish my country would do the same. Yes, thank you, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Dean, for your question. Thank you, Professor Laura, for your extra explanation. Uh, next one, question. Ušte neko da li ima prašenja? Uh, Professor Atanasovsky. Ajde, da, povelete. Sorry, uh, this is not a question for this professor. I'm sorry because uh, I don't know if there are possibilities because uh, for the, I think, previous lecture from the Spain about the Texas is medicine, but now she is not here. I would like to, to share some very important uh, information about this project because now exercise is medicine on the European uh, level for the five years is prescription for health, but now I would not like to, to interrupt you in uh, this uh, lecture, on uh, other lectures, but uh, there are important things, but because the professor for Spain now is not here, I'm sorry, because there was change of link, but maybe in, a, in, a, in another situation, because this is very important question uh, for us, for you, for everything, because there are very strong procedure about prescription of health, there is a need, uh, education for the doctors and from the your uh, faculty is very 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 big uh, project because uh, i would like a previous professor to visit the site of european association of sports medicine there is a strong prescription for health and now i would like to inform you that they are also in the macedonian language this prescription for health and this is very important because a very uh, very sure procedure very strong procedure about what to do because this is a very serious project, because in this, everyone uh, should be uh, involved, because for us, uh, the prescription should be made by the specialist of sports medicine provided by, by your profession. And it's a very, uh, very serious project. But okay, I would don't like to interrupt you, maybe in other situation, because the professor is not here. Can I, okay. if I can uh, um, reply on something? Um, Europe recently engaged in a, a big uh, uh, project uh, called DEDIPAC. And DEDIPAC was a joint program initiative uh, on uh, a healthy diet and healthy lifestyle. And uh, uh, it ended uh, in 2016, and there are more than uh, uh, 45 papers out. But uh, um, uh, just to give you uh, my vision, because I was uh, involved uh, and also as World Package Leader and so on. Physical activity behavior, it's a very complex phenomenon. Cannot be reduced uh, to a mechanicistic approach uh, like uh, 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 sports is medicine. I, I, I think, that uh, there are social aspects uh, and also individual aspects uh, and uh, so it's very complex. I do understand that it's very important to give the message that exercise is medicine. But, but okay. the more okay. we give the message, the least we have uh, active people. 